Hello, this is HT Wingnut, and today I want to talk about cheap or inexpensive SSDs, in particular the 11 JS600 SSD uh, of the 2 terabyte and 128 gigabyte variant. Uh, real quick look at the device itself. This is the 2 terabyte variant. This is the 128 gigabyte variant. Nothing much to it. You just have the basic casing, barcode label on the back, and the SATA connector. The 2 terabyte version has a uh, all metal enclosure. The 128 gigabyte version has a plastic enclosure. And then uh, compare that with the uh, Samsung 850 Evo uh, 2 terabyte SSD. We're going to do a comparison of that, both hardware and uh, benchmark wise. And then just for fun, a uh, 2 terabyte um, Western Digital Blue laptop hard drive, just to kind of see how. Uh, how it differs, which obviously we know that an SSD should blow away a laptop hard drive these days. The first thing I'm going to do is disassemble the uh, SSDs, just kind of get a look for what's on the inside. And to open the uh, two terabyte guy, you've basically got to pry it open. So I'm just using this uh, flathead jeweler screwdriver. Um, there we go. It's basically just a small circuit board, a couple of screws, and all the actual electronics and stuff, the guts, the brains of it are on the other side. What you have here is a controller chip and then the actual two terabyte of um, NAND uh, flash. So in this case, all your data is stored just on this one chip here. There's no DRAM cache on here whatsoever. And that usually means uh, performance can suffer um, pretty miserably on these and we'll see how that goes. Uh, compare that with the uh, 128 gigabyte SSD. This one is very similar. You just have to kind of find a good spot to pry it open. So no screws, just remove it. And this doesn't even have any screws in it. It's just in there for the ride. And uh, like the two terabyte, um, you can see here that it has a um, controller chip here, as well as this one actually has four NAND flash chips. So each of these would be uh, 32 gigabytes a piece. So that's all there is to it. And then we move on to the uh, Samsung 850 Evo two terabyte SSD. <coughs> Excuse me, this is my personal. Um, two terabyte drive used for games on my computer. <coughs> Excuse me for all the coughing. Uh, and this one has hidden screws underneath the label here. That's the other thing on the 128 gigabyte 11 SSD. The label was on here, but it just was barely adhered. I'm not sure where it went. So that's the other thing. Not only was it uh, warranty void if remove sticker on there, the actual label sticker like on this guy is just barely even stuck on there and it just came right off. But in any case, as I unscrew this Samsung, not fully, there we go. And that's very similar to this, just a little bit bigger board, SATA connector, and then you've got your, your controller, and in this case, you actually have your DRAM cache. Let's see which one is. I believe that's the DRAM cache. One of these two is, but one's a controller, one's a DRAM cache. And the rest are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 uh, NAND flash modules. So 2 terabyte, if I can do math, probably not. Um, each one of these are uh, 256 gigabytes in capacity. So 256, 512, 1 terabyte. Yep, 2 terabytes total. So that's what you have there. Um, I'm not going to disassemble the hard drive. If you open up a hard drive, it's kind of useless afterwards. Uh, it won't work. So, but, so we're not going to deal with that. So let me get this back together here, and then we will go ahead and take a look at these in the computer. All right, now that we've seen the uh, physical SSDs, let's take a look at uh, some more details here in this Windows machine. I have both the 128 gigabyte and two terabyte SSDs installed on this machine. Um, before we get into any of the benchmarks though, I just wanted to show that I did take pictures of the uh, uh, actual NAND cache and the controller chip on the two terabyte SSD. 
and to see if I can get any more information about it. And here you can see the 11 JA28A2TB002148, which is the, uh, the NAND flash on the SSD. Uh, doing a quick Google search resulted in pretty much nothing. So can't really glean much information off of that. Okay, so let's continue on and uh, take a look at the controller chip here. It is the SM2259XT and Googling that I was able to get to the uh, website and find a PDF for the actual controller chip, the SM2259XT. It's a silicon motion chip and then they have all their marketing garbledy gook here. Blah, blah, blah. Let's go down to the specs. You can see it supports QLC and TLC NAND. It's SATA 6 gigabyte uh, TLC and SLC caching. And you can see it as SATA 6 gigabit per second. And sequential read performance of 560 megabytes per second. Sequential write of 520 megabytes per second. And random read and write IOPS of 75,000. You can also see here that it says DRAMless. And uh, as you can see on the SSDs themselves, they didn't have any DRAM cache, and this particular controller doesn't support it. So obviously you're, it wouldn't do you any good if you had it anyways. And that's about all we can get out of this. So um, let's take a look at Crystal Disk Info for these disks. Let's take a look at the 128 gigabyte first. I have been torture testing this disk. And so you can see here that is 277 terabytes of NAND writes to this SSD. You can see over here that it says it's at zero percent with a good but a good status like if you look at any other SSD like this uh, two terabyte I've only written 27 terabytes to it and it's a good set of 97 percent. Well that zero percent just says it's some supplier provided attribute which is likely the uh, total NAND writes has been exceeded what they recommend. Um, I did email Levin and they did tell me that uh, these are TLC NAND flash and they will uh, have about 1,000 to 3,000 programming race cycles which we've done 277 terabytes out of 128 gigabytes. So 284, 270 gigabytes divided by 120 gigabytes size of the disk. We've written uh, over 2,200 uh, times to that NAND flash and so that equates to roughly about the 2,200 programming race cycles. So it's uh, at, at the end of its uh, useful life here, but it still has been working. And even though I hit the 250 gigabyte, 250 terabyte mark, I kept writing to it, and this still says good. So it still seems to be working. I did some quick scans of the SSD, and uh, it seems to be fine. So endurance-wise, these seem to be pretty robust. Um, quick look at the two terabyte SSD, and just uh, basically the same info here. Uh, just uh, for reference only. Okay, I did run some benchmarks for these 11 SSDs, and I did compare them with the 850, sorry, the Samsung 850 Evo, as well as a Western Digital Blue two terabyte laptop hard drive just for giggles. I ran uh, Crystal Disk Mark, Hard Disk Sentinel, and a homemade batch file, which basically emulates just a file copy uh, performance test from within Windows. First, the Crystal Disk Mark. In the upper left, you can see we have the 11 2 terabyte SSD. Lower left, the 11 128 gigabyte SSD. Upper right, the Samsung Evo 850 2 terabyte SSD. And lower right, the Western Digital Blue 2 terabyte SATA hard drive. And uh, quick look here, you can see that uh, in this test, it uh, both the 2 terabyte and the 128 gigabyte SSD by 11 are nearly comparable to the 2 terabyte. Samsung 850 Evo. And then here we have the uh, laptop hard drive performance just for comparison. Um, but note that Crystal Disk Mark is a quick test. It's a very short test and it doesn't really give you the full performance of the SSD or hard drive that you're testing. So we'll take a look at that um, using Hard Disk Sentinel. Now first of all we have the uh, 2 terabyte 11 SSD and what you see here is the, ignore the top, that's just the temperature over time, but the bottom here is the total gigabytes written across the SSD, across the entirety of the SSD, and it's really more of a stream test. It does a sector by sector write of just a random data. And you can see here it starts off good at about 420 megabytes per second, and then at about 450 to 500 gigabytes written, it just tanks down to about 100 
to 125 megabytes per second and tanks a little bit more near the end and then recovers a little bit. So it cannot sustain a long write across the entirety of the SSD. On the read side, however, it maintains a solid 420 to 425 megabytes per second across the entirety of the SSD. Now you compare that with the Samsung Evo. Here is the write test for the Samsung Evo. It's about 460 megabytes per second across the entirety of the SSD. Right? Compare that with the write of the uh, 11. Big difference there. But that's what you get when you have a, uh, a higher quality SSD. With, and then as far as reads are concerned on the Samsung, solid across the board at about 460 megabytes per second. And then we look at the hard drive. Um, it, a typical hard drive curve is starts higher and then runs lower. Uh, from 120 megabytes per second to 60 megabytes per second, both on the writes and the reads. And then the 128 gigabyte uh, 11 SSD, it performs similarly to the two terabyte. It gets part way through the test and then it just tanks. Uh, this time it's only down to about 250 megabytes per second compared to about 100 megabytes per second on the uh, two terabyte version. Uh, so that doesn't look so awful, but it's still uh, not real great. But on the read side, same thing. It's uh, steady across the board at about 460 to 470 megabytes per second across the entirety of the SSD. Now, um, hitting an SSD uh, with a ton of data at once uh, can be kind of unfair, especially with a lower end SSD. It's not really meant to sustain, you know, two terabytes worth of writes, but it should be able to sustain, you know, tens of gigabytes of writes uh, before it, it completely crashes. That being said, um, uh, some, well, not some, all SSDs pretty much have a uh, routine which is called garbage collection and wear leveling, basically where with some idle time, it will go through and uh, correct itself, uh, basically clean up all um, deleted files and everything else and, and, to, and then rearrange everything in, in the proper pages, etc. So basically, it given idle time, it will more or less try to recover some performance. So keep that in mind. But first test was just writing one gigabyte files um, using a Windows file copy command across the entirety of the disk. So similar to the hard disk Sentinel test, we ended up with about 425 megabytes per second write. Then at about 475 to 500 megabyte or gigabytes written, it tanked. And then at about 900 gigabytes, it recovered again. And then it tanked again. So that's just a steady write across the entirety of the SSD. So going back to the garbage collection idea and uh, just having idle time to recover, um, every 400 gigabytes, I said, okay, let's pause the test for an hour. Still writing one gigabyte files across the entirety of the disk, but every 400 gigabytes, the test will pause for an hour. And you can see after each pause, it did recover a little bit. And I continued with that idea by increasing the pause time or idle time for about four hours every 400 gigabytes. So each time it seemed to recover decently, but then it tanked again, and then reduced the interval to 200 gigabytes, and then idle for two hours. So you can see after each interval, actually it's really steady across here. For some reason it tanked again here, but then it spiked after each interval. And then I paused at each interval for about four hours, and the performance was about the same as with the two hour idle time. Um, and we won't talk about that one. And then finally, I did a uh, 30 gigabyte segments. Um, you'll take a look here. On if you look at the two terabyte SSD itself, um, I did a benchmark test. Basically, it is comprised of 30 gigabytes of files and it's everything from 10 kilobyte to 100 kilobyte to one megabyte to 10 megabyte to 100 megabyte to one gigabyte files. So the total totality of each of these was written um, in 30 gigabyte chunks. Um, and it had a two hour idle time in between each 30 gigabyte chunk. So this is basically a week long test. You can see here from the first test started on August 7th, 2022 at 2.28 PM. And then continued on, next write was at 4.31 PM. So, you know, write the entirety of the 30 gigs pause for two hours, write the next 30 gigs, pause for two hours, next 30 gigs. And so you can see it started at 
August 7th at 2.38 p.m. and ended on August 13th at 12.18 a.m. So this gave it plenty of idle time to recover. Um, so the one gigabyte files, you can see here that it averaged about 144 megabytes per second. But unfortunately, uh, you can see here there's a lot of spikes going on. It's not real consistent. It like drops down and increases. So um, on average, it's pretty decent, not great. Um, but uh, you do have a lot of spikes, peaks and valleys and throughout. Going on to the 10 kilobyte files, the smallest files, um, it had about 160 megabytes per second, which is not bad for a small file size. But again, you see a lot of these spikes going on here, but it is clustered more around the average, so it's not quite as bad. Um, looking at 100 kilobyte files, um, again, we have something similar to 10 kilobyte, about 160 megabytes per second, and uh, spikes are very similar. Then we go to the one megabyte files. Now this is interesting. You can see here that uh, we have about 300 megabytes per second on average, which isn't horrible, but we also have excessive spikes, just bang, 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 all the way across. So, and then going on to the 10 megabyte files, same thing. Faster average speed, 368 megabytes per second, but it tends to spike, spike periodically. I'm not sure why it went all the way up to 800 to 100, 1,000 uh, megabytes per second. My only thought on that is that is likely um, Windows caching uh, going on there. But for the bulk of it, it's all at 600 megabytes per second or below. Um, which is the limits of the uh, SATA interface. And then lastly, we have the 100 megabyte files, which actually performed the best. You still had spikes here, but it basically clustered around about 414 megabytes per second throughout the entirety of the test. Finally, we had the read performance across the SSD. Um, so this is basically, I wrote all those one gigabyte files and then I read them all back and it averaged about, I didn't write it down here, but it's, you can see it's about 390 megabytes per second actual file read performance across the entirety of the SSD. Okay, so that's that. So what can we glean from this? Basically, bottom line is um, this SSD is not a very good SSD for any kind of write performance. It's good to start for the first third of the SSD. Beyond that, you're going to have ping-ponging write performance. Read performance is actually really good, so if you need an SSD, a cheap SSD, uh, just to... So if you need a cheap SSD um, just for, you know, decent read performance, this isn't a bad idea. I wouldn't use it for anything like a Steam drive because especially when it does updates, um, there's a lot of writing involved there and that could just take forever to uh, update your games. Um, real quick, this is on Amazon.com. Okay, uh, you can see that this is on Amazon.com right now, a two terabyte SSD for only a hundred bucks. So depending on what you need it for, I think it's uh, not a bad value. It's pretty cheap compared to the other SSDs, but its write performance may just be too pathetic for, for most users' applications. But if you just need a simple, uh, a decent 400 megabyte per second read performance, then it may be worth it. And uh, that's all I have to say for now. I hope you enjoyed the review and uh, until next time.